I am Neda Maria Kaisumi, your host, and with us, we are honored to have Mr. Frude Vatrum as our guest. Frude is a seasoned professional with extensive experience in sustainability and strategic development. He has held significant roles in various organizations, contributing to, to the advancement of sustainable practices and responsible business strategies. His insight into the integration of tech and strategy within sustainable framework are invaluable, and we look forward to delving into his perspective on responsible AI and its role in shaping a sustainable future. Thank you for being with us today and taking time to share your insight through that. You've had many important positions, such as Chief of Strategy and Sustainability for Router, which is one of the main public transport in Norway. Also, you had volunteered for Tsunami Rebuilding Project, and currently you are the chairman of the board for a couple of extremely important organizations, such as SOS Barnaby Year and WWF Norway, which both support a sustainable world. In your experience, how can technology support social sustainability? Well, thank you for letting me join this session, Neda. I'm good to see you again, uh, and for the for the uh, let's say most important question there is, right? So, how can technology uh, help with uh, everything and and anything? And of course, if you're a you know sustainable professional, that's that's what you care about. But I do think that actually technology and now especially AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, can support because sustainability is such a complex matter. Uh, you know, there you, there's 17 sustainability development goals. If you want to work with 17 or just any sustainability goals, you probably have to um, work with data and information and connections within the company. Uh, and it's going to be variety and probably every department or at least a lot of departments. In addition, you have to go down the value chain to your suppliers. And it's connected to things like how actually is the temperature change out there? How does that, how does that affect the risks? of your assets, et cetera, et cetera. So there is just to, to, to understand uh, and to to work on sustainability. Uh, you you, you tap, tap, tap into such a complexity of different items. So it's very difficult for people <laughs> to gather and make sense out of that data. Uh, so that's why I think technology driven um, initiatives in sustainability is going to be a, a, a necessity to really yeah. understand it and embed it into the business. Yeah, totally agree. While talking about technology, we know that technology can be also misused just like anything else. Uh, do you think criminals like cyber criminals and others can misuse technology to unbalance the sustainable world? Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, it's going to be a race, right, between the negative forces of AI and the, and the positive forces of AI, which again should, should lead everybody like me, uh, who are sustainability professionals, who are sh should and have to, you know, take care of, of the, the social and environmental aspects, which again have to also be protective of what the negative effects of AI can be. So we have to kind of like race, race this topic, uh, be one of the persons within the company to make sure we balance uh, leveraging the AI and technology to do something, you know, fast and good and be competitive. Uh, but at the same time, putting up, you know, principles and reflection on how not to misuse it. And without that being the barrier and, and, and let on the speed of using it to, to, the, to the opportunity that it, uh, that it has. So that balance is extremely difficult. And I think that it takes a strategic brain and strategic thinking and good methods to, to be fast and leverage technology without misusing it or, or, or influencing or letting others misuse it. So um, huge, extremely difficult. I, I really like the strategic uh, thinking idea. I think that's kind of aligned with what I'm thinking. But what do you think uh, responsible AI means to you? What what does ethical AI means to you? Uh, and uh, why is it important in today's society? Well, um, I mean, since AI is so, so important uh, and can be used in so many areas, um, of course, then it has the potential also to be uh, misused. And it's also a tool that everybody can use. I mean, we have chat GPT, right? So we can just, it's not, it's not a complex stuff that you can control in, 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 in a defined area. You have to control it within so many 
spaces and for so many people. Um, so, um, so for me, it just means that uh, we have to, to work in every level. We have to work on the international level, United Nations, uh, between continents, uh, EU. Uh, we have to work, which are doing quite an okay job. We have to work on the national level. We have to work in the industry level, we have to work in a company level, and we have to work on individual leaders within each department. To really understand, I think the leaders have to understand what AI does. We have to understand and have some kind of framework on where we can where we can use AI and where not to use AI. So we have to use it in, in, in the areas where we both have a benefit, but also can control it. And thirdly, build competence on each individual. So when you use it in some areas, you 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 you're smart to think about these are, these are the things not to use it for, and these are the things to to use it for. And I think it's very difficult to to control in one individual level or in the, you know the EU level. It has to be kind of build a bridge uh, between all. Um, and it's a it's a big step, right? I mean, from the EU to make uh, regulations on it, which is. If, I'm not an expert in other regulations, but I appreciate them coming. But I do fear that they will slow people down because it's going to be complex. But it's like to, to take those regulations and use them in a smart way. Again, not to let it slow us down too, too many, but embrace, embrace it and see it as, as good ways also to prioritize the stuff that we want to do. Because normally you can do the right stuff in the right way. You just have to accept and, and, and uh, appreciate the boundaries and drive innovation within it because the boundaries are set because uh, you know a reason right there's smart people doing it and it's high risk of of misusing it misusing it if you don't do it right i i think actually sustainability is in your backbone because the way that you put this in layers and uh, work with awareness in all kind of levels and uh, things i think that that's the key that's very important not everybody thinks like that but knowing you from before, I know that you always want to ensure compliance with regulatory and EU directives. One example was your engagement on battery passport. I assume you also have heard about the AI Act and uh, its support of responsible AI or AI. Do you think that AI Act will really serve its purpose? I think that it's... Uh... I don't think it will serve its purpose alone, and I do believe it's going to be a lot of bumps in the road uh, with the, the next versions and revisions and implementation of AI Act, especially of the kind of influence the, the US probably now has on both AI uh, acts and regulations as well as ESG acts and regulations, etc. So I think um, so. I think the the idea behind it is good. Uh, I have not, uh, you know, I don't know as I think nobody knows how fast and how positive is going to be embedded. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bumpy ride before it's going to be implemented and effective. But I do, I support and embrace the necessity to start with such an act and start thinking about it and be upfront. Although you never know, it's very difficult to be upfront, right? Because every half a year you have such big developments. But I think from the experts I know, they embrace it. I, I trust it and like to embrace it as well. But again, I think it's going to be iterations and, and changes before it's going to be effective embraced by the bigger majority. Yeah, and it's definitely challenging being cross-continental. We, we don't know what will happen in Asia or US, so mm. that's definitely a challenge. Mm. Well, a couple of my Harvard colleagues and I are creating an AI model to reduce uh, or stop a school shooting in the US. This problem didn't exist in Scandinavia until last week that we witnessed mass shooting in Sweden. So, first of all, how close do you think that can be to Norway and how important it is to be techno uh, to use technology and AI to reduce the school shooting? How do you see and evaluate this, uh, the impact of this unsustainable society? I, 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 I heard uh, you talk about that initially a bit and I think it's uh, very exciting and it's very important. And it leads me actually to, to some thinking I did on my job, as you mentioned, on the Public Transportation Authority. Uh, if you could just start there for a few, you know, first, because we we got the support from the politician who owned us and the internal, um, let's say, um, ambitions or, or, or boldness to actually be to, 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 to leverage as much as possible within the world of technology it was more technology than AI back then because of some years ago, but still uh, um, some kind of a, a, IT learning. And I think the reason why we did that and the reason why we said we should that 
it's better to, to go in the boundaries of what you should do with technology in a public space, right? Because public servants, public space, politically controlled companies should, I hope and have, uh, a better reason to actually keep within the boundaries and therefore should exp explore the AI potential to the maximum and should support using AI where the benefit on the social on the, on, on the social and environmental side is significant because the ones who will anyway drive AI efforts are the commercial companies which probably often focus on the on the pure commercial aspects but we should definitely not be overly concerned and careful which I think sometimes we are in a public space that like, we don't want to do this because it might be dangerous we want to be best in class I think we should do the opposite I mean we have the biggest societal potential and ambitions so we are committed to to try to 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 push the boundaries what you can do with AI and technology but at the same time uh, having the the transparency to show how you do it and if you do the transparency on how you do it you can actually do a lot and I think that the um, examples of, of predicting and catching up where there can be uh, shooting uh, in uh, in schools are a fantastic and concrete example uh, and, and, and you know and, and growing concern I was in the United States one year myself and experienced a shooting it's a terrible thing and if you can avoid it you should and I do understand how AI can help so I really uh, encourage and I think I hope you're gonna be successful in that effort and we can copy that to a lot of the, the similar issues uh, or, or different issues, but societal area within Norway and the Nordics. I think, you know, I know that you're also a parent and uh, as a parent, it's really deeply concerned that how kids have uh, in school. So this is something has been in uh, my heart for many, many years. But now that we learned about AI, I think that's something that we have to use. Okay, last but not least, if you had all the means and resources available to you to use AI to solve the social problem, what would that be? And how do you explain the role of technologies in your problem statement? Yeah, I'm gonna, I can, I can think about it, come back with like the, if I were God kind of uh, answer uh, and which problems to solve, but I'm gonna answer it in my own small world of sustainability, if I, if I might. Uh, and that's, um, that's basically leveraging AI in the efforts of working with two or three of the biggest ESG issues, which for me, the ones that I work, I work with a lot is climate change, reducing CO2 emissions, uh, nature and biodiversity, nature protection, uh, the biodiversity issues, and then human rights. And I think their AI can be used dynamically and real time. Because if you think about, it, you should, you know, think about climate change. You should reduce your carbon emissions, but climate change will also have an effect on the weather uh, and circumstances where your factories are and where your suppliers are. And nature and nature catastrophes and droughts is happening somewhere or more often than than uh, and will happen in in twenty years more likely there are the, some some somewhere in some places more than others. Now there are scientists have have analyze this they know where the, the where it's going to be warmer faster they know where the flooding can come they know where where droughts can happen so they have these predictions right and we do a lot of analysis within the company on how to both reduce and mitigate climate change but very few people can can make these two together into a dynamic real-time smart layer where actually we can pretty much see the the actual risks of our supply chain of operations of factories regarding these climate change nature catastrophes that will that is likely to happen within 5 10 20 years and if you invest in a building if your supplier invests in a building in 10 years you should consider that now it, it is a 20 percent likelihood of drought and shutdown of your main supplier you have an operational risk and i think we're able to know that if we if we leverage the the data probably open right um on this dynamic kind of scenario planning and carbon reduction planning in nature and and last point i made was the human rights right because there's definitely data out there that you can pull down from this different databases but it's right now very manually based and you pick out some data you try to make a good presentation to your management team you make some decisions this should be able through ai to pull a lot more data and put it together in a smart way 
mixed scenarios and use that as continuously business risk and opportunities evaluation and business decisions. So that'd be my world, the biggest and perfect next steps of AI making sense to use. I know that we can talk about this topic for many, many hours. And, yeah, you have to stop uh, I know me. That, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're very engaged. And I know that you have a lot of good, brilliant ideas. I, I've been talking to you before. So thank you very much for sharing this insight uh, with my audiences. There are many technologies and investors out there and that might be interested to pick your uh, brain and uh, build upon it and make this world a better place to live. I'm quite sure. So we hope that someone uh, reach out to you uh, and uh, hearing more uh, about your uh, plan and uh, develop a business plan. All by this, wish you a very nice day ahead. And uh, once again, thank you uh, for your time and joining here.